So whenever I first joined the Gary's Mod Dark RP community, I had absolutely no idea what was going on. I'm not gonna lie, I literally knew freaking nothing. I was just walking around and like screaming at walls and like, oh, I love Dark RP, it's so much fun. Um, and the issue was, I couldn't find any information on how to play this game. So in today's video, I'm gonna be teaching you guys, guess this, how to play this game. Because a lot of new players don't really know what they're doing, and uh, I want to help you guys out, because I had that same issue and it was absolutely terrible. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoy the video. If you do enjoy any time, feel free to like and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're gonna start out from the very beginning of how to play Dark RP. First of all, you need to download CS Source. Uh, you can either buy it on Steam, buy it on G2A, but you have to download this for a majority of the textures to load in. I'm gonna show you a couple of screenshots of people who do not have this, and as you can tell, not everything is loaded in, and that's what this issue is. So make sure to purchase or download CS Source. I know you're going to be like, oh, that's stupid. I have to pay $20 to play Dark RP when I already own Gary's Mod. Yeah, that's just how Valve is. Um, there's a way to get it free. I don't know what that way is, but you can probably search it up on YouTube. And then once you do that, come back to this video. So again, to start out, just go ahead and purchase or somehow download CS Source. And then you obviously want to go in and join a server, you know, search Dark RP, click a server, join it, and then boom, you're in the server. And that's where I'm at right now. Now on any server, no matter what server it is, whenever you first start out, you're going to be a citizen. You don't have a job and you're just a loner with no job and no life. You obviously want a job. So in order to do this, it is the same on every single server. What you want to do is hit F4 and it opens up the menu. Now again, these menus can look different on different servers, but it's pretty much the same concept no matter what. Now with this menu, there are three main sections, usually. There's jobs, ammo, and entities. Jobs is obviously where you join a job. Ammo is where you purchase ammo for your weapons if the server allows it. And then entities is for stuff like money printers, bitcoin miners, meth cookers. Depending on which server you're on, this is going to vary, but every server has some sort of entity. So these are really good to make money, but we'll get to that later. So again, what you're going to want to go ahead and do to start out is join a job. And depending on the server, again, the jobs are very different depending on which server you're on. There's like tons of them and it really depends on what you want to do. But some of the jobs are requesting a vote. Some of them are locked, and some of them are public to all players. So something simple like a hobo, or a mechanic, stuff like that, that's all going to be open to anybody, so it's like first come first serve, you can join these jobs. If you want something more exclusive, like a cop or a SWAT team member, you're going to have to request it on most servers. So whenever you click this, it'll start a vote, and people have to vote you in to be this job. So for the example of this video, we're just going to start out by being um, something like a... We'll be a thief, that's a pretty basic job. We're gonna start out as a thief. Now again, each job has its very own, you know, abilities and perks, and you're kinda just gonna have to learn these all yourself um, as you play throughout the server. But, you know, each thing is separate, so each thing is gonna have a different role and a different task, but it's pretty much all the same concept. On your hotbar, you're gonna have certain things depending on what your job is. So since I'm a thief, I have a lockpick, which I can use to raid people's houses. So for example, if I walk up to this guy, I can raid his house, which I'm not going to do because, yeah. Anyways, that's kind of the basis for like how the jobs work. Basically, you join a job, you start your job, and then you just be become a job guy. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I don't want to make this a long video going over every single job. So I may make some separate videos on like certain jobs, like how to be a gun dealer, how to be a hitman, stuff like that. Um, but kind of just play around with this and learn. I honestly had the most fun learning this, so... Anything job related, just go ahead and mess around with it and learn. Okay, so you're at the point now where you want to build a base. You know, you're, you're getting up your money, you're making a pretty good salary with your job, and you're tired of getting murdered in the street, so you're going to go ahead and build a base. The first thing that you want to do is scout out the area and try to find somewhere that's good to build a base. Like, the map is big, especially depending on what map you're on, but basically just go around until you find somewhere that is unowned and you want a base here. Now, this is an absolutely terrible base, but for the example of the video, we're gonna go ahead and make this our base. So the first thing you wanna do whenever you find a base that you wanna live in is walk up to the doors and press F2 to own these doors. These doors are now yours, you can open and close them, and this is now your lovely home. Now obviously, if you have a nice little cozy house, you don't want people coming in to steal all of your stuff. So you're gonna to wanna to lock your doors. And in order to do that, you need to go equip your keys in your inventory. So just scroll through, click on keys. Uh, your gun kinda of disappears, and now you have your keys in your hands. You walk up to the door, and you left click to lock it to so see it is no longer able to be opened and then if you want to unlock it you just right click multiple times and you can now unlock your door 
go inside, close it, and then lock it back. And as you can tell, oops. And as you can tell, nobody can open your door now, and you're very secure, unless you get raided. Which leads me to my second point about base building. Building the base. Obviously, you do not want to get raided while you're building your base because it's just irritating and there's absolutely no point in this. So first of all, this is very important, Q is what opens up your building menu. This is where you're going to use everything you need to build, along with some of the tools you're going to need to make your base unraidable while you're building. A lot of these aren't important, but what you want to look out for is one that says text screen. On different servers, it could appear in like different sections, but for the most part, it's probably in the construction section. So go ahead and click on your text screen, which for here on this server is down here, and now you have a text screen. Basically, to prevent people from raiding you while you're building, every single server has a rule that is no attacking a base that is being built. So if you want to prevent people from raiding you while you're building, you want to type in this little section right here, building, you know, pick your text color and your text size, it really doesn't matter, and then click over in the open area on the side. Once you do that, you will now have your text screen gun active, and you can shoot it on the wall and uh, use that to show people that you're building, and then you cannot get raided while you're building. Also, you can use this for more important things later on, like if you have a gun store, you can just say gun store inside, or whatever you want to say, and then put it on the wall, and then people can know what's inside. Also, if you want to get rid of anything that you build, hit the Z key, and it goes away. So like throughout this whole process, if you mess up while building, hit the Z key, and your last place item will go away. So now that you have a building sign, you're going to want to actually build the actual base itself. And if you look at any well-designed bases in Dark RP, a majority of them have fading doors and complicated passageways to get in, and this is done in order to prevent people from just like coming in, going in one door, and raiding everything you have. Like the more doors you have, the more secure it is. So now we're going to get into the actual building aspect of this, and it's pretty simple. Once you kind of understand it and play around with it, you will understand most of it, but again, I'm just going to try to give you guys a rundown. Basically, as I said earlier, every single prop you need will be inside of this Q menu. So anytime you need to build, hold down the Q button, and that is where you get your items from. If you navigate to the Builder General section, this is where I do a lot of my building materials from. I've, I've used it in other videos, like the one where I built the base inside somebody else's base. Cough, cough, check it out, link in the description. And also, I've used it in other videos in the past. But basically, again, a majority of the materials I use are the ones inside this section right here because they're the easiest to build with. Uh, what you want to go ahead and do is find a material that's big enough to build your first passageway. We're going to use this one for the example simply because it can be maneuvered and placed however you want it to be. So in order to move these materials around that you placed on the ground, you need to use a physics gun. So physics gun, you pick it up, move it around, whatever, place it wherever you need to. So basically, you know, just walk around, place it however you need to, and then set it down. Now as you notice, it's not very secure. You can kind of just move it. So what you need to do in order to freeze this is place it wherever you want to, and then while it's selected, you want to right click, which freezes it and makes it solid where people cannot walk through it. So you can go ahead and keep building and keep placing stuff to build yourself a nice little wall, you know, lock it in, test it out a little bit, and as you can tell, as I lock these all in, I now have a little wall that cannot be passed through, and that's why you have to freeze the things. But, oh no, this is very uneven. What do I do to fix this? Well remember, hit Z to undo all of this stuff. So Z, Z, Z. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and build a straight wall this time, the proper way. Anyways, now that that's over with, um, basically, you wanna make a straight wall, okay? You don't want these curvy, ugly walls. You want them to look good. So in order to do this, you need to hold down the Q button again to open up all of this, and look for the tool that says Stacker. It is right here, whenever you find it, click on it, and you now have this stacker tool, which looks very complicated, but don't worry, it's pretty simple. The first thing that you want to do is select the box that says freeze props. That'll keep them frozen where they don't move around whenever you place them. That is very important. Next, you want to decide which direction you want to stack something. So for example, if you want to stack it up to build your wall taller, you select it on up, and then it'll build it up, as you can tell. Um, it's kind of highlighting it and showing that it's going to build it up. Obviously, if you want it to go front, you know, it'll go front, if you want it to go left, it'll go left, if you want it to go up, it'll go up, all of that stuff. Basically, just decide which direction you need, depending on where you're looking at it from, and figure out which way you want to build it. So for the example of this wall here, I'm going to want to do it in the front, because, you know, it stacks it that direction. So once you find the direction, you know, select it, and go ahead and click. 
Well, this server is stupid. They don't have the stacker enabled. It's the most important tool for building. I guess we're changing servers real quick. Hold on. Word of advice, never play in a server that doesn't have the stacker on. It's literally the dumbest thing ever. See, this is a good example of how like the HUD and everything varies depending on which server you're on. So as you can tell, now that I'm on a different server, uh, everything looks a little bit different. And if I open up the job menu, it kind of changes the look of everything. But it's still the same concept. There's really nothing new there. Okay, so you want to build your wall. Uh, basically, hold down Q, go to the stacker tool, select freeze props, and then pick which direction you want your uh, your prop to go from the thing. So for this example, we want it to go left. Obviously, that's where it's going, and we want to block this whole area off. So once you have it selected, you just shoot this. So, you know, you left click and shoot this, and it creates a wall squarely across that nobody can mess with. As you can tell, it's solid, and it is nice. And now that you went across, you want to go ahead and go up. So change it to up, and then just stack your wall over and over until it looks nice and smooth. If you go too fast and you get any props that look like this and they're like half see-through, just pull out your physics gun, click them, and then right click to freeze them because you went too fast and it kind of broke them a little bit. Now I'm no Donald Trump here, but I do have to say this is probably the ugliest wall I've ever seen in my entire life. Uh, please don't judge my wall making ability. But um, in order to make your wall raidable, you know, it has to have a way to get through it because if people, like if you block yourself in a box that nobody can get in, it's against the rules on every server. It's called prop blocking. You don't want to do it. So you need to make it where people can get into this if they wanted to raid it, and of course where you can get out of it. So in order to do that, you need to make a fading door and a keypad. Again, all of this is inside the building menu. So go ahead and open up the Q button, or hit the Q button, and then look on your tool section for an area that says fading doors. Most of this stuff isn't really important. Um, a lot of this is like if you want an animation whenever it fades. So like for example, whenever you open it, it looks like this, or whenever you open it, it looks like this. It really just depends on preferences. We'll just go with the raindrop one just to make it look nice and clean. But basically what you want to do is you want to set this fading door to a number or a key or something on your keyboard or mouse. If you have macro keys, that'll work too, that you'll remember. So for the example, we're going to use number pad zero. So what you do is you click on this, it'll say press a key, and you press number pad zero because that's the key that you want. Now you have your tool gun in your hand and you need to make the actual fading door. So the fading door is going to be what opens whenever you enter in the code. So let's say we want to walk in right here. So you select that one and select that one, and this is now a fading door. So if I push zero on the keypad, like I, the number I set it to, it now opens. Like while I'm holding down zero, it'll be open, now I turn around, and whenever I let go of zero, it closes. That's basically what that is. But again, people still cannot get through this if they want to raid, so you need to make it where they can, um, and that is what keypads are for. So you now need to link your keypad to your fading door. So in order to do this, open up your menu and click on keypad, and now we're going to go ahead and go through all of this. Access password is a way for people that are basing with you to get in. So what they do is they enter in this code on your keypad, and um, it opens the door for a set amount of time, they can walk in, and then it automatically closes. This is what you need if you have people basing with you. So let's say that we will make the password 55, because that's a great secure password. And that is now what they type in to get into your base. Next thing you want to do is go ahead and select the weld and freeze tool in order to make it where it stays still at wherever you place it. The next up, access granted key, this is the key that it pushes if the guy gets the code right. So for example, if they enter in 54 instead of 55, nothing will happen. But if they enter in 55, you set it to the same key that you set to open with. So you click it, set it to the same key as the fading door, and now whenever they hit 55, it hits that key, which opens up the fading door. As for the hold length, it really doesn't matter, but it kind of depends on the server. So check the server rules and see what their door opening time is. I'm just gonna say five seconds because that's fine. And that's really all that matters in this section. So now that you have this, again, let go of the Q button, click over here in the opening, and place your keypad somewhere next to your fading door. And side note here, you need to have one on each side. So we're gonna go ahead and place one right here. There's a keypad there. Go through the fading door and push one right there. So now if somebody comes in raids, they can crack the keypad, which opens the door, allowing them to get inside. Or of course, if you have teammates, they can enter in the code, 55, enter, and now they can go inside your base. I would recommend having multiple fading doors, each one with a different code, which makes it harder for people to get in because then, you know, they have to go through the front door break them through that one, crack this keypad, crack the next keypad, crack the next keypad, and that gives you a pretty secure base. Now you're probably wondering, what is the point of a base? Like, what, what's the point of having a base? Can you put anything in your base? 
And the answer to that question is yes. And again, this also depends on the server and what your job is, but every single server has something for you to do inside of your base. So hit F4 once again to open up your menu, and then go to the miscellaneous or entity section. I just remembered on some servers it's called miscellaneous and on others it's called entities, but it's pretty much the same thing. So if you have enough money, you can purchase these items to help you make more money. So let's just go ahead and say um, we have $50,000 and we want to make some more money over time. Now our best option would be to purchase a money printer. And we're just going to go with the regular money printer just because we don't want to spend all of our money on it. So what you do is you click what you want, it spawns it in, and you now have yourself a money printer, which can be harvested to make you money. Now again, make sure to have these in a very secure area, because you don't want people to come in and just steal everything. Um, now that you have your money printer here, it'll just start producing money for you. So they're all different, they all look different, but it's basically the same concept. It says how much money it's holding, and then there's a way to remove that money. So I guess in this server you have to hit access, and click withdraw, and as you can tell it says $300, whenever I click it, it will take out the money and you made money from it. Now whenever your base is completed and you have stuff inside that's making you money, you actually have to, like by rule, um, you have to remove your building sign. So now I'm going to teach you guys how to remove objects that you've placed. Hold down Q to open up the menu, click on the remover, close it, and then click on what you want to remove, and it'll go away. And honestly, that's the basis for everything of Dark RP. Like I gave you guys all the basics and you understand a majority of everything. If you have any questions or requests for videos you want me to make in the future, let me know in the comments below and I can make a specific tutorial on what you want me to make a tutorial on. Just make sure to stay subscribed and stay tuned so you can see these tutorials whenever they come out, and then I'll make a tutorial on that aspect and show you guys what's the deal. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you didn't enjoy any time, feel free to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Also, a little side note, a lot of you guys know my Bootleg RP series. Well, it is going to be back very, very soon.